Hello, everyone. Thank you for, um, it's been a long, 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 you know, just preparation for this event, but we're so thankful for each one of you that are, you are here. Um, my father became a soldier in 1970 and fought with the U.S., and my parents were married in 1975, and in 1976, my father was imprisoned in the concentration camp. My father was not there when I was born, and I wouldn't, wouldn't meet him again until I'm about two to two and a half years old. Desiring to have a safe and a better life for our family, my parents sold all their belongings to purchase a ticket on a boat crossing the Mekong River. Their plan was to make it to Thailand and safely enter the refugee camp. The first boat we boarded hit a rock. I remember being tossed off the boat as others scrambled to get off the boat before it sank. We waited without knowing what will happen, but we had hoped that our journey would not stop there. Another boat finally came, and seven of us boarded to continue on our journey. Arriving in Thailand, my family were held in a holding cell at a police station for one week. We didn't receive food or water. My aunt, who was living in Thailand at that time, came to deliver food every single day for us, to us. A week after completing our paperwork to apply to go to the U.S., we headed to the refugee camp. At Nong Kai's refugee camp, we live in a square, one-bedroom building. It had cold cement walls and a tin roof. Every time it rains, you can hear the raindrops at its, as it hits the tin roof. And at nighttime, I remember hearing geckos. You know, whatever sound they make, they don't say, they don't say geiko. <laughs> but they make that sound, and they would crawl the walls of the cement cold walls that we had. It was a place of safety for our family and it, would, it became our home. We were in Thailand's refugee camps for five years, and before our next relocation, my grandmother passed away. In January, in January of 1986, my family relocated to Manila refugee camp in the Philippines. There, my parents had to do their part by working two hours and going to English class every day. My mom worked with the Catholic Church by sewing, and my dad would clean the local hospital clinic. Life for me was going to school and studying, and there I learned my very first English song. I, I'm sure a lot of you learn it. If you're happy and you know, clap your hand. <laughs> and I was introduced to Michael Jackson, the king of pop. I saw his We Are the World um, music video for the first time was there in the Philippines. I also saw an important movie that would later be the centerpiece of my life as well, the Jesus film. In June of 1986, when I was nine, my family received words that we were heading to the U.S. We were told this land is a place where money grows on trees and where new life can begin. Life in America was not easy and money did not grow on trees. All five of us packed like sardines in a two, into a two-bedroom apartment shared with my uncle and four of his family members. My parents did not know how to speak English or read English. Life was not easy for me and my siblings as well. Kids at school were not friendly. At times, I was told to go back to where you came from. I did not understand why would someone say such a thing to someone else. Here I am with my family, trying to survive in a new foreign land. Our clothes were hand-me-down from a local church that would come to our home with a brown, large brown paper bag filled with food. And one thing I remember was having my very first taste of Wonder Bread and bologna. <laughs> I love peeling the red strip off the bologna and eating it. I know it's, kind of, it's gross right now, but it was really good. Uh, with a soft, moist piece of Wonder Bread. Life eventually got better. My parents slowly learned to speak English and work hard at their jobs. My, my brother and sister and I were thriving in school. I was fully immersed in the American culture, ate American food, played American sports, had American friends. I was in the in-group, but at home was a different story. My parents just didn't understand why we wanted to play sports. Why did, we, why did we want to put a Christmas tree up? Why do we want to celebrate Christmas? They just didn't understand, but for us kids, we just wanted to fit in. We wanted to be part of America. I love my mom's cooking and speaking our language, but I also enjoy hamburgers and speaking in English as well. I felt like I was living a 1.5 life. I wasn't a first generation. 
I wasn't a second generation. I was stuck right there in the middle. As I grew older, I became an interpreter, a check writer, a bill reader for my parents. I was the first to graduate from high school, and I can tell that my parents were super proud, very proud. They also placed a large hope on me that I would be more successful than them. As a believer of Jesus Christ, I wanted to impact people's lives in a positive way. I decided to attend Liberty University, a Christian school, to grow my personal faith and pursue a nursing degree. On the way to my very first week of school, my parents were sitting in the front seat and I was in the back seat. My father looked straight into um, to my eyes through the rear view mirror and said these words, your mother and I have something important to tell you or to talk to you about and now. I was like, okay, um, the car is going 70 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. On the other side is a really steep hill or cliff. I can't really jump out of the car right now, but I continue to listen. And he said, we would like you to concentrate on your study, finish your school, get a good job, don't think about boys, don't associate <laughs> with boys, just finish, finish school, and then maybe, maybe you'll get married one day. <laughs> after graduating from college, 20 years after coming to the US, I decided to go back to Southeast Asia to teach English at a school in Bangkok, Thailand. From my trip, I learned that I did not need to lose the Lao part of my identity in order to fit in as an American. I have also journeyed through feelings of disconnecting myself from my past in order to fit in, but now I've learned to embrace who I am, where I've come from. I also appreciate, I appreciate my father's hardship as a soldier and grateful to my parents for their strength to give our family a new life in America. If I can give a title to my story, it would be from sticky rice to one of bread and back. Thank you. <laughs> So, so the story continues. This is our, our story. I knew that Mickey was coming to visit our friends, and I would only have four days uh, to get to know her. So the doorbell rang, and my friend May said, hey, it's only Philip, Ton's friend. He hangs out with Ton all the time, and he just want to join us for dinner. I didn't think anything about it, um, but it felt a little weird because they kept leaving us in the living room together. And uh, that night, I said, what is there to do in Reading, by the way? So I thought of two things, uh, the Sundial Bridge <laughs> and the shooting range. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> so I've never seen the Sundial Bridge and always wanted to shoot a gun. <laughs> so the next day, uh, Philip joined us, and I was encouraged uh, to ride with him. My friends decided to stick their eight-year-old son as a chaperone in the back seat. <laughs> when we were in the car, Philip turned to me and asked, What qualities are you looking for in a future husband? <laughs> are you serious? I don't even know you. I'm not going to answer that question. I said, yes, I'm serious. Well, I'm not going to give you an answer. At that moment, we arrive at his, um, our friend's house, and I actually buckle my belt and jump out of the car. Is it something that I said? <laughs> so anyways, we went to the sundial uh, and, and then the shooting range. I was able to show her how to safely handle a gun and that you didn't, you didn't have to be afraid of a gun. Oh, well, I felt safe and was not afraid. Hmm. And I thought to myself, well, this guy is really good at teaching. So I decided uh, to uh, ask Mickey out because I was uh, first drawn to her uh, faith in God. Uh, and also, she was very beautiful inwardly and outwardly. And so I asked her, you know, would, would you like to go with me uh, or would you like to go to dinner? Um, and also, we could stop by the sundial again because at nighttime, <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> Um, no thanks. I don't really think I need to see sun the sundial again at nighttime. And I already saw it during the day. And uh, besides, I have to babysit my friend's uh, kids. At that moment, my friend came to me and just said, uh, just go out with him. I asked him the dreaded question, are you setting me up? I don't even know him. Who is this guy? Can I trust him? My, f uh, my friend said to me, we love you both. 
You are like our brother and our sister. And if we had a sister, we would want him to marry her. So out of respect for my friends, and tr I trusted what they said, um, but I still was not convinced and decided to use a lifeline and phone another friend. <laughs> my, fr <laughs> my friend in Virginia said, um, well, you prayed for someone who would be straightforward in getting to know you, so just go out with him. So we went on our first date to the Olive Garden, another popular restaurant in Reading. Where, where else can you go? <laughs> Too bad they didn't have famous Dave back then. <laughs> Anyways, uh, our date went well, and, and I really liked her. Uh, but I didn't know how to uh, take the next steps uh, to get to know her better. So I said something in our conversation, uh, um, something along the line of, let's just stop here. And I could tell she was very confused. And uh, however, I knew that since she's only here for a few days, I had to do something. Well, my last night at my friend's house was really weird. Uh, my friend left Philip again and me in the living room with an excuse that they had to put their kids to bed early because of school the next day. They turned off all the lights. It was just like a spotlight <laughs> on us. And I'm thinking, it's my last night. Doesn't my friend care to hang out with me before I fly out the next day? So I knew that it, things were a little weird, uh, especially after that first date. And, but in my heart, I knew that I had to make a choice. And I could kind of uh, just go our own ways or, or, you know, I needed to make a choice. So what I did, I, I chose to be brave, and I asked her for her email. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need my email address? I don't need a friend all the way in Reading. I have plenty of friends in Virginia. Well, the, the real reason was uh, I, w I wanted to get her email was because I was interested in pursuing her uh, for, uh, you know, the possibility of marriage as well. Well, when I heard what he said, I could not help but smile. The four days of getting to know Philip, there were many qualities that I liked about him, and I'm glad that he was honest and straightforward with his, his intention, because every girl does not need a friend. We need to know exactly why you're asking us out, <laughs> even, if it's, it was the, even if it's the first date only. <laughs> Um, I couldn't believe that I am now in a relationship and heading back home. After two months of talking on the phone, Philip was coming to visit Virginia. I decided to introduce my family to him. A computer was set up with my dad, mom, sister, brother, nephew, nieces, all surrounding, just like Seinfeld's like, <laughs> TV show or something. Um, and we Skype him, and the first question my dad asked was, do you love my daughter? At that moment, everyone got out, up and left the room. It was just me in the corner and Phil on the screen and my dad sitting there. But you know what, I, w I was embarrassed, but I realized how grateful I am to a father, a father who loved me. If you thought that was straightforward, or if you thought my question to her was straightforward, that was a very straightforward question. <laughs> um, I, I told him that, you know, at this point, I cannot answer that, but I hope to be able to kind of along that line, but uh, so I survived uh, her uh, father's questionings, and uh, and uh, we we talked and had a great time uh, to get to know each other. And uh, five months later, I, I asked Mickey to see. I asked her if she would marry me, and she said yes. Um, and now here we are, uh, living in Reading, um, and. In July, we will actually be celebra celebrating our six-year anniversary. So we hope to continue to share our parents' stories and our stories with our children so that they can be proud of their heritage. We hope that our children will see the strengths in their grandparents, their parents, and the lives that were sacrificed in order for them to enjoy life in America today. Thank you for your time.